Hello and welcome to the second video in the iNav 2.1 Brain FPV Radix and Hobby King Bixler V1.1 build. Now I have done lots of iNav series already on the channel but most of them tend to go into wings and I've had quite a few subscribers and Patreons come along and ask me to put iNav into a more conventional plane with separate ailerons, elevators and rudders to show how it's done because some people are getting caught out and in version 2 and 2.1 of iNav a couple of things have changed so it's worthwhile me doing this series to update everything. Now if you haven't already watched the first one in the series I recommend go back and watch that. That explained about this series and we also went through the process of downloading the special version of iNav that you need to put on the Brain FPV Radix because as I explained in the first video this fab little flight controller has a graphical on-screen display so it's all vector based and it's ultra smooth and it'll be a really cool way to get to fly. So in this video the objective is to get to the other end and have it all connected into the Bixler. There is an extra little bit of wiring that I'm going to do to try and make the whole assembly kind of plug and play so that I can plug not only the servos into the back but also the GPS, the video transmitter and also the camera for the front. But I'm also going to do a couple of extra cute things as well because even though there are only four outputs on the power distribution board or the wing PB that I'm using here with the Radix that just easily plugs together you can also have an extra two servos out and I would like to add those as a pan and tilt control for a pan and tilt gimbal for the FPV stuff at the front of the Bixler. So let's get cracking and set this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug the flight controller into the computer and go and do the basic pieces. Now, when you first plug it in, you'll see in the right hand side that there are a couple of red X's telling me that the thing is failing some of the pre-arming checks. And that's because the accelerometer isn't calibrated and the hardware health has a potential problem, but that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into calibration, click on calibrate accelerometer and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the board in each of the positions shown. You can do it in any random order. And then once it's happy, it'll put a tick in the box of the one that you've completed. Just work your way through each of these. Try and follow along and match the arrow. We'll probably end up doing this again in the model before we fly. And in the next video, we'll probably end up doing the last little tweaks once it's physically installed in the Bixler. But hopefully you can see here as we go through, we're just going along until we have all six of them completed. And that will mean the accelerometer is calibrated and that will take care of that little red X in the pre-arming check in the setup screen. Now that we've finished that, we can see that the hardware health is fine and also the accelerometer calibration is good as well. So we're in a lot better shape than we were when we came in. So everything's moving around as I put the front of the board down, it moves. So it's the graphic on the screen is matching exactly what the board is doing, which is good news. Next job then is to select a mixer. Now this mixer is new in INF 2.0, so we're going to have an airplane mixer and I'm going to click a standard airplane. I'm going to click load and apply, so that is going to uh, put it into the configuration of the Radix and that is going to then reboot and come back and we're going to do a couple of changes to it because by default we have two separate servos for the ailerons and I don't need that for the Bixler. So I'm going to delete all the stuff I don't need. I only need one stabilized roll, one stabilized yaw and a stabilized pitch and it'll leave everything else the same. So just save and reboot that and that means that we only need the three servo outputs on the wing power board for the Bixler because the Bixler I have doesn't have flaps. So if you look at the top here, motor one is gonna plug into S1 and then the other servos two, three and five are gonna come out on S2, S3 and S4. So ignore the image in the graphic that is all gonna work and that's how we're gonna wire it up. Now in the next video, I'll also add the custom mixes for the pan and tilt servo, but that should work fine for now. So we're gonna add the next preset and you see all we're doing is we're kind of just working our way down the left hand side of the screen. So we're gonna save that preset for a plane and that's going to do the majority of the configuration steps but we'll double check everything again before we fly. And now that is looking an awful lot happier. So we're gonna to have to set up the ports. Uh, we'll come back to those in a minute. I'll show you how I've got them all set up. 
but that looks very happy everything is green the board is level uh, we'll leave everything as it is for now i have turned the magnetometer off that's set to none uh, but let's just jump onto the bench and start thinking about how we can actually put this stuff together Next job then is figuring out where this flight controller is going to sit in this Bixler V1.1. Now the Bixler isn't really made for a flight controller, it wasn't designed that way. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of effort into this. Now there isn't a lot of room, initially I was going to put the GPS maybe on um, dorsal just in front of the motor but I want then to also put the video transmitter away from the GPS and I want the receiving antenna of the FR Sky receiver different as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a little bit of a trick. If you ever go on holiday and you end up with some pool noodles, then bring them home because they are great for not only protecting against hangar rash when you transport your planes, but for things like this. So I've cut myself a piece so I can mount the board on top of it. And knowing where it's going to sit, I have a very good idea of how long the cable runs need to be for the VTX, the camera, the radio receiver, the connections to the ESC, and also how it's all going to plug into the servos and the throttle channel as well. So now I know how long all the cables need to be, we need to figure out how they're going to be connected to the Radix. Now if we look at the Radix manual, it's really good and shows you where everything's going to go. Now I'm not going to solder these pieces directly, I'm actually going to solder on servo connectors, DuPont style connectors, so that everything is plug and play in the plane. The reason for that is that the way the Bixler is set, I can't really get in there to do the soldering of these cables without leaving lots of room and it'll also mean it's also plug and play if I want to change things later on. So we can see where the GPS needs to connect, we can see where the FR Sky receiver is. I'm not going to be able to use the FR Sky smart port on this. I'm not bothered about smart port for this particular build. We can see where the camera's going to go, uh, the power connections are actually going to go to the wing power board and we can also see where the VTX is going to plug in. The Brain FPV manuals are fantastic so they do explain how to put it together. Also with the wing power board, the WPB, all of the settings are pretty straightforward and it does supply the power we're going to need for both the video transmitter and I'm using one of these elite video transmitters from Hobby King. They're great and will fit beautifully. I'm sinking it into the wing of the Bixler on one side. The GPS can go on the other side and it will also provide the nice clean 5 volt power as well. Now, because we haven't soldered the little 5 volt pad underneath the wing power board, the 5 volts that it creates is a 2 amp steady, I think it's a 3 amp burst 5 volt BEC. All it's going to be doing is running the receiver and it's going to be running the camera and it's also going to be running the GPS as well as the Radix. So it should easily be able to cope with that. So let me show you how I'm actually going to wire this together with my particular wiring loom and hopefully this will be a little bit easier. On the left hand side is the wing power board, on the right hand side is the Radix and they're both aligned so that the nose of the model would be at the top of the screen. So I'm going to put the camera in on the right hand side and I'm going to put the video transmitter on the left hand side. I'm going to power the video transmitter from that filtered battery power that comes from the power distribution board. On the bottom, the GPS is going to be powered from the 5 volts and ground from the wing power distribution board and then connected to UR6. And then I'm also going to have another cable that's going to go to the receiver that's going to plug straight into the receiver. I think I'm going to use something like an X4R here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go along here and put this together piece by piece. So first of all is to solder up the pins. I'm going to use right angled pins so they shoot down the back of the Bixler. It's going to make it as low profile as possible when I install it. I've taken the GPS out of the cover and I've also removed the little plug. It helpfully has all the connections on the GPS there so I know what how it all needs to be connected so I can just unplug that and solder directly to those pads because those pads correspond to that writing that's printed on the PCB. So there it is all connected and what I've done, don't forget the transmit of UART6 which is where the GPS is connected to has to go to the receive on the GPS and the receive on the GPS has to go transmit. So you swap them over, receive to transmit, transmit to receive. It's one of those golden rules when you're wiring these things up. Now we've got that all configured, the next job is just to quickly check that I haven't created any shorts, visually inspect the wiring to make sure that all the wires have gone where I think they should go and they match the diagram that we started out with. 
and then the next thing to do is just plug it all together and make sure it's going to work. Now out of shot in the top left hand corner is the VTX sunk into the wing of the Bixler that's got all the wiring set. So this wiring here is going to be the wiring used in the model. The only thing I'm going to need is solve the ESC and I'm just going to power it up and make sure that everything works and there's no magic smoke. And the great news is it absolutely does work. And not only does it work, it's actually seeing the GPS. So let me just show you what I've done in the iNav settings just to set this up so it's ready to go. So going back in here, you can see that we have the GPS is live and all working. Calibration we did last time. Mixer we don't need to touch for the moment. We'll be coming back here to add those two extra outputs for the two additional servos. Here's the ports. So I've selected TBS Smart Audio, although I didn't need to. I can disable that, to be honest. I'm not using Smart Audio for this VTX in this instance. But you can see UART6 is the GPS at 57600. Then all of the settings are very similar. We haven't enabled the motor and servo output yet. That's one of the last things we'll do. Receiver mode is Spectrum Satellite with SBUS, and you'll notice that one of the previous ports was selected for serial. I've turned on the current sensor and the voltage monitoring, and apart from that, everything is as it was. Failsafe, as set to return to home, because what's the point of having iNav if that doesn't work? PID tuning we haven't touched yet, and the receiver, I've just gone through and made sure that that all works. The other thing I've done here is set up my modes. The initial flight we want the pass through or manual mode and we want angle mode we obviously want to set an arming switch as well but again we'll be coming back in here just to tweak this for the first flight i would always recommend having at least a pass through manual mode enabled so you can get out of the inav stuff if it isn't working properly and the angle mode for flying servos not changed anything in there so we're now all set. If I just scroll down a little bit, I'm not going to scroll down too far because it's got all the location information. But there we are, we have a 3D fix with seven, well, eight satellites now. And that's not bad considering I'm indoors. On-screen displays configured in the same way as a standard configuration for iNav on a regular flight controller. But you'll find that the way it appears in the OSD is very different. So I would always recommend while you're doing this, having your goggles or a little screen powered up so you can see exactly what everything looks like. Because the whole point of the Radix is that the on-screen display is very, very different and much more sophisticated. Okay. So now we have that set up. So now you know what the ports need to be and now you know how I've got set. So the GPS is working. You've seen how it's all wired in. So we're ready for the next video where we can do the final tweaks and then we can do our maiden flight. To install this into the Bixler isn't going to be too tricky, but if we just take a quick moment just to give you some close-ups of how this has all gone together. And if I put this side by side along with the wiring diagram, Hopefully that also makes sense. You may have spotted that there's a couple of extra cables that I haven't talked about in the previous image. And those are the servo outputs that are connected to the S5 and S6 pads. Those are the additional two servos. And those pads are underneath the Radix by the side of the USB cable. So I've connected the signal pins of those cables to those and picked up five volts and ground from somewhere else. And I'm hoping they can run the pan and tilt servos on the FPV gimbal that I'm going to be popping into the Bixler. So there's only one set of soldering connections left to do on this, and that is to solder the ESC to the back. But before I can do that, I need to mount the flight controller on that little piece of hool noodle that we looked at before. So I've just cut a few holes that just correspond to the screws that I've used to mount this whole thing together, and then put hot glue in all the places where it needs to be. I'll put the 3D printable parts that I've designed for this rig on Thingiverse, so check out the description below if you want to download it, and just push those together and that's in place. Next job then is before we do that last bit of soldering to install the GPS. GPS is going to go into the other wing from the FPV bits, I've cut out a small recess so that it'll sit flush onto the wing using hot glue to hold that into place and then the cover that was actually part of the enclosure fits nicely over the top. I'm going to put that on there just to make it look a little bit more finished. I'm using foam safe CA glue for that, just popping that into the holes that the cover would normally go into and pushing that into place. So now the GPS is in the plane, the VTX is in the plane. I've also mounted the pan and tilt gimbal 
on the canopy. This is the canopy that came with the Bixler. I've just removed the kind of plastic cover that makes it look like a canopy that you could sit in. And then I've attached the Hobby King Pan and Tilt gimbal that I reviewed a little while ago. Made a little adapter for the smaller camera. This is a run cam racer and pushed all the cables through. So hopefully when we get to the end, that's what's going to plug into all the stuff that comes out the front of the Radix and will give me FPV and Pan and Tilt too. So let's do the last bit of soldering. Uh, clip the ends off the ESC in the Bixler and solder those two power connectors onto the back of the wing power board and then everything else is now plug and play. So it's just a case of putting the wings on, routing the cables and plugging the various bits in where they need to go. So the aileron connection, the VTX connection going on to the Radix, then pushing on the other wing, feeding through the GPS cable and also connecting the aileron to the Y cable as well, pushing all of that home, pulling all the cables through and just plugging them into the Radix and making it off. And with a bit of work, you can see the Radix is going to push down and fit nicely in position. Just going to have to be careful to make sure that the antennas are nicely rearward of all the rest of the electronics, and that will give me the best possible reception. But popping a camera in the nose and popping the FPV gimbal into place, the center of gravity in the plane is still spot on. So that is great news. So now that's all done, that's as far as we're going to go in this video. Join me in the next video where we'll complete the setup and we'll double check everything's working in the right way, that the iNav system is correcting the elevator, aileron and rudder in the right way for stabilized flight. We'll make sure that nothing has happened between it working on the bench and me installing it here. And once we've happy that it's all commissioned, make the last couple of changes in iNav, we'll go to the field and give it a first flight. So join me in that next video where hopefully we'll get this thing in the air. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.